My guest on the Dolphin Tales podcast today, head men's lacrosse coach John Galloway, coming to us from Utah. I mean, not often that we're, we're talking this far away, but you're out there for the PLL tournament going on right now. Coach, how, how's it going out on the other side of the United States right now? It's going well. It's uh, it's an experience, that's for sure. You know, I think we're just getting used to our surroundings and uh, recognizing that this is the only way for, for live sports to be happening in this summer. And uh, I think all of us as players are just excited and thrilled that we were able to, to have a season. So uh, it's been a ride. We've learned a lot. I, I, give, I give credit to our league and uh, the safety procedures that they've put in place to make sure that we can get the, these games going. And after three rounds of testing, it's, uh, you know, we, we feel as safe as we possibly could be and, and ready to play. It's been fascinating just to see how professional sports have tried to navigate this throughout the course of the last several months. And uh, for you all, you've gone for the bubble concept as well. I I know it's a little bit apples to oranges here, but do you think that there's anything you've seen from the bubble concept that you think can be applied to, to college sports as they try to come back here starting hopefully in the fall, if not the winter? Yeah, you know, one of the things that is unique to what we have been doing is essentially creating travel groups. And and while there's always going to be cross contamination between teams and between groups, uh, I, I do think that, you know, having set groups, you know, for let's say, you know, you, you translate that to college campuses, having having cohorts of students going to classes together and going to the cafeteria together. And uh, it's allowed us to kind of keep an eye on each group and what they're going through and, and, and hopefully limit any outbreaks if there is a, a positive test. And I think that, that that has been a great indicator for, you know, uh, how quickly this thing can spread. You're seeing in the MLB right now, and hopefully we're doing a good job of making sure that if, you know, there is a, a case that comes out, we don't infect the entire league. And that's going to be something that I think most colleges have to take into consideration is not if there's going to be a positive, because there's going to be, but how well you can control that. What's been the strangest aspect to to living in a bubble or a clean site? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of unique challenges. I, I do think that it, just, I, I think, the a natural social interaction that you have with your teammates and your players, uh, you know, walking down the hallway wearing a mask, you, your natural reaction is to, to give a guy a hug or, or a high five, and uh, you're just limited to, to your interactions now. So that's, that's a challenge. Um, beyond that, once you're – once you feel safe, once you feel contained, a lot of it does become normal. Um, but I will say that we're just a, a probably a product of our uh, of our uh, atmosphere, and, and, and that a lot of people when they hear our schedule, you know, we we wake up, we go downstairs, we take a health check, we get, grab breakfast, we come back into our room, we take team buses, we go back to the facility, we spend the day in the facility, you know, wearing masks and staying within our group. Uh, we get lunch, we get dinner. Uh, in groups, and then we're we're back here. So it's a very regimented schedule. But uh, you know, as soon as you get used to something new, it becomes it becomes a normal for you. The last time we caught up was man months ago now. The very beginning of all this stuff happening, the season had just ended. Uh, we, we were talking about how you had dealt with communicating with your team about how the the season wouldn't be continuing. Unfortunately. Uh, that feels like it was two, three years ago at this point. Where, uh, how have you handled the last several months, staying in contact with your team, addressing those that are coming back, those that aren't coming back, and, and sort of the, the nature of just trying to stay connected through, through these trying times? Yeah, and there, there's no perfect blueprint for what we've all been going through and, and how you communicate with your players has been one of the most important aspects of our jobs. And we spent really the, the, the remainder of the spring as well as early summer having a chance to just get to know our guys on a different level. We didn't talk a lot of lacrosse. Uh, we, we sectioned our meetings into specific thoughts. You know, it was a little bit more team building. Uh, some of it was just education. You know, obviously everything going on in the world provided us with our platform to educate our guys and And us as coaches aren't always prepared to provide that knowledge. So what we did was we spent a lot of time bringing other people into our our Zoom calls with our team and allowing our guys to ask questions, but, you know, more so to educate themselves on everything that's going on, obviously, with the social injustice in the world. Uh, just the the unfairness of, of what's happening in their lives. I think as 18 to 22 year olds, we would all admit that we would probably feel slighted by what's going on right now in our world. So, you know, explaining to them that this is this is a level playing field for all of us. And then we spent one day talking lacrosse briefly by position and 
that month of May and June, I thought was some of the most informative, uh, thoughtful, uh, authentic meetings we've ever had as a team, even though it was virtual. And uh, at, at the end of June, we decided, you know, these guys on a normal schedule would be away from us for three months. And we can't, uh, just because of what's going on, we can't change their their normal schedules. We have to keep it as, as normal as possible. So we decided to give the month of July off. You know, I think that for every student athlete, they need time to decompress. They need time away from the coaches and away from the pressures of the, you know, the, the grind that is division one athletics. So um, we haven't talked to them, you know, again, individually, we, we stay in touch with them, of course, but as a team, we haven't talked to them from July 1st and we'll resume our meetings next week, but uh, it's been nice. It's been nice to hear from them, to, to hear how eager they are to be back with their teammates. Uh, all of them are just hopeful that there's some sense of normalcy in the fall. And I think that that is uh, a credit to our university and the atmosphere they've created that, People want to be back. People want to be together. People want to be back in the state of Florida as a team. And uh, we're excited for that chance. And hopefully it comes soon enough. Over the last several years, when you and I have talked, whether that be podcasts or what have you, you've just talked about how you always try and identify something, grow as a head coach, find a new way to get better. Have you, have you figured out where, where maybe you've taken a little bit of this craziness and been able to, to use that in a positive for some growth? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think this, again, this off season has been more opportunity for growth than any other time before, you know, a lot of our schedules are so, um, you know, they're so filled with recruiting and, and the next step, you know, we're always looking at the next phase of, of our team. And this has allowed us to take a step back and reevaluate our, our culture, reevaluate what we're doing in our locker room, uh, reevaluate the tone of our program. I think that that's been a big theme, even now just for me playing, kind of taking a step back and seeing, where guys have the most fun, where, when it's the most stressful, when it's the most physically taxing or mentally taxing and how can we make this more enjoyable for the guys? Because I do think that there's a, a mental component to, to everything that's going on right now. And when our guys get back, this is going to be their outlet. And, you know, we have to be really thoughtful of not jumping right back on the horse and going full speed just because we haven't been with them. You know, this is going to be an opportunity for them to, to get outside of their house, back with their teammates, having a chance to have that social interaction. And we have to make it really, really excited for them. And, and there's going to be a, a level of hard work that we bring with that. But uh, in the last three months, I think all of us have been able to reflect and, and understand that, man, it's, it's, this, is, this should be the best part of our day, the best part of our year. Um, you know, and when it's taken away from us, how much that hurts. And, and, and that's going to be something I think we probably emphasize a little bit more from a coaching standpoint with our guys is, you know, we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know if we're going to play this spring. And if that's the case, we better have a heck of a lot of fun this fall in our, in our time together. Fascinating that you bring up the, the aspect of your, what you see still as a player. You've continued your professional career. You've continued playing with the uh, U.S. national team over the course of the last couple of years as you've been the head coach at Jacksonville University. So how, I mean – not many people, I guess, get the opportunity to see it from a player's eyes while being a coach. What, what are some of the things that you picked up here as of late while, while, you've been, while you've been watching things from the back end in goal? Yeah, well, from a physical standpoint, you know, definitely, and maybe that's just because I'm in my 30s now, but it takes a toll on, on your body. So, you know, just recognizing what a post game feels like, you know, getting out of bed, getting into the ice baths, the hydrotherapy. I, I think as you get older, you recognize all these little parts of, of your regimen are so important. And uh, that might mean the film. You know, we, we spend an adequate amount of time watching film together and having conversations as players, not just with, with the coaches. Um, the rehab is, is critical in, in a situation that we're in where we're going to play hopefully seven games in, in 15 or 16 days. Uh, you have to recognize what lacrosse does to your body and, and how can you, how can you bounce back quickly? And for us, you know, it's, again, it's, we're always so used to the normalcy of, Hey, let's practice every day and let's play and then let's practice, practice, practice. And, you know, there is a level of, um, you know, a concern about your body and, and, and your mind, you know, how much can you take throughout the entire spring and, and throughout a year. So I think as a player, you're just recognizing what it feels like, uh, you know, on the other end and, and where you can maybe find some, some times to, to take a step back and make sure the bodies are healthy and the minds are fresh and then hit the ground running again. And I think that, you know, what we learned here, especially in the bubble is, you know, quality over quantity, you know, we can't be out there. We had two a days for training camp and at some point that's not going to be sustainable. We have to have good hour, hour, 15 minute practices, great conversation in between sessions, authentic, prepared, 
but being able to to feel fresh when we wake up out of bed in the morning and that's something that uh, is hard to to you know think about when you're a coach and you can only emulate it as a player one of your former players, your former GAs, Hunter Forbes, playing on the team with you out there in Utah. What has that been like, that, that experience? It's awesome. You know, obviously just to have another guy, you know, from our program out here and experiencing this and, and having Hunter be the guy is, is a perfect fit because I do think he was a player that was overlooked in college. Unfortunately, uh, you know, he was third in the nation in, in faceoff percentage. He should have been given this opportunity a couple of years ago, um, but for him to be recognized now and him just to have the experience. And, you know, we have two great faceoff guys on our roster. He's going to have the opportunity to get some playing time. He did the other night. Um, but for him just to be able to be out here is going to propel him for the next four years. And, you know, in, in, in this level, as a face-off guy, it's not easy to give, be given a chance. And I'm just glad he's has that opportunity, and I think he's thrived in it over the last two weeks. Do you see your experience at the professional level ongoing now, having seen the, the various leagues and the opportunities continuing to grow for professional opportunities in lacrosse in this country? Do you use that as a selling point when you're trying to bring guys in to this Jacksonville lacrosse community? Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at the last two weeks, and I, I sent a note to our SID, uh, Matt Moretti, and, and, and our director of ops, Danielle, and I, you know, just as we were starting to work on our social media promotions, you know, at one point, we had four guys in, in our program playing professional lacrosse on the same night on ESPN and, and NBC Sports. And I mean, you could not have said that about lacrosse a few years ago. And uh, I was fortunate enough to play at Syracuse. And, uh, you know, if you compare it, it's I think it's three guys that's from Syracuse in this league and two guys from Jacksonville. That's pretty damn good. I mean, I think that that's, um, you know, an opportunity for us to continue to promote the growth of our game in the South and, and the opportunity that you're going to have post-graduation. So not only Hunter and I here, but Ryan Bevel and, and Hayden Labanji and their experiences they, they had in, in the MLL and uh, what they did for their team, you know, to win three games in a row to make the playoffs. Obviously their league was unfortunately cut short by, by COVID, but man, what a, what a chance for us as a program to, you know, step out of this shadow and say, Hey, we're, we're here and we're producing guys that can play at this level. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Still so many unknowns with w what things are going to look like over the course of the next several weeks, much less several months, as you all gear up for hopefully having a, a somewhat normal spring season. But can you, can you take us inside some of the thought processes toward how you're hoping to maximize the opportunities with your players, regardless of what things look like as far as scheduling and playing and things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, I have no doubt that our guys are going to come back with a, a sense of excitement that we've never seen before in the fall. So even if we are in groups of five or groups of 10, and it's mostly individual work in the fall, we're going to have this group of guys that is so thrilled to be playing the game again. And, and our roster is going to be bigger than ever before. It's going to be more competitive than it ever has been, I think, with the return of some of our seniors, uh, the influx of some transfers and freshmen, and then the, just the competitive nature that we had in the middle of our classes. Um, guys are coming back hungry. They're hungry knowing that this is a team that, you know, we started to, um, you know, we started to try to figure out our identity in the middle of last spring. And, and as we were going, I think that, you know, this, this group of young, this batch of younger guys started to have a greater sense of um, <clears throat> expectation of the team. And if we can continue to, you know, transition that into our new guys, to our transfers, to our freshmen, and we can continue to create a competitive culture, our guys, even if we're just practicing, those scrimmages are going to be more heated than they ever have been before. And I do think when you have practice as difficult and as intense as a game, those things will translate into the spring. And we're obviously all hopeful for the spring, but we have to take this a day at a time and just go to battle together. And honestly, if we can be really proud of our efforts in the fall, regardless of what happens, this team will become a team. And, and that's our job in the fall is just to re recreate that and, and figure out what the identity of this new group is and make it as competitive as possible. Well, as we sit here and record this, you're in the midst of sort of the preliminary rounds. This will air and the playoffs will be starting on August 4th for the PLL uh, out in Utah. Hopefully you guys are, are out there making a run with the Chrome and, and, and it'll be exciting to watch NBC, NBC Sports and NBC Gold. Uh, so much great, you know, you hate to see the fact that the Olympics 
aren't happening right now, but it's really opened up a, a, a great opportunity here for, for Paul Rabel, the PLL, and, and you all to, to get some unbelievable exposure here over the course of the next couple of weeks on some major broadcast networks. I mean, that, that's got to be exciting for the sport, uh, one that you love and want to see grow, right? Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, we have two games on tonight. It's Tuesday night in the middle of the summer. At no time before have we ever been on national TV. And to have two games on NBC Sports Network, uh, there's been games on NBC Main. NBC Gold has all the games streaming. Uh, again, MLL was on ESPN. Just to have the sport featured in, in this way, you're right. The Olympics not happening is is obviously devastating. But what a what a smart move by our league to take advantage of those those TV windows and to pull across at the forefront of a lot of people's minds as sports return and and to have it be a really good product that's been really fun to watch as well and it's a credit to all the guys that are in the bubble that have prepared to hopefully pull across at the at the you know at, the, at a new level well coach best of luck to you and and your team as you go forward and enjoy a life in the bubble as weird as it may seem at times and look forward to catching up with you soon i appreciate it. thanks for having me on